So according to a KFF health tracking poll, two thirds of American adults have a family member addicted to drugs or alcohol. Two thirds, 66 percent. It's based on a survey of 1,327 adults, so it's a pretty good number, all right? There's no politics involved in this at all. So I think that number's right. My grandfather, all right, I don't know if he's an alcoholic. I was too young to know that, but he died of cirrhosis of liver, and I know he's a big boozer, okay? My cousin, he died of alcoholism as well, and I knew him, and he left seven children, and he died in his 40s. So you have it too. I get letters every day. So smart life, what do you do? It is an amazingly complicated situation because there's a lot of different reasons for addiction. There are two things that you have to make a decision on. Number one, if you have any power over the individual, like money, or they're living with you, that kind of stuff, whether you continue that situation or not. I don't. I'm not going to enable an addicted person. They're not getting any money from me. They're not going to live in my home. No. I would, out of compassion, set them up with a small apartment if they were destitute rather than being out in the street. And I pick up probably the rent for a period of maybe two or three months and say to the person, look, you either go to rehab, you get it together. I'll give you three months in apartment. If you don't, you're out. And the chances are they'll be out. You got to rock bottom it before these people want rehab because they like getting high. They like getting drunk. They like it. That's why they do it. The second thing is compassion. So that has to be there. And when you're talking, if you can actually have a conversation with these people, if they're sober long enough, say, look, I really feel bad for you. And if I can help you help yourself, I'm going to do that, but you have to help yourself. But if I can, you know, get specialists and hunt up some research for you, or do whatever you need, medical doctors, insurance, because insurance covers addiction recovery, I'll help you. But the chances are that they're not going to go for the help at least the first 80 times you offer it, because addiction gets you. And again, most of these addicts and alcoholics, they want to get high. They don't care who it hurts. They don't care if they destroy themselves. Look, we got about 150,000 Americans going to die from fentanyl this year. About 150,000, maybe more. Now, that, is, that stat I'm giving you is higher than the stat the government puts out because the government doesn't want you to know the extent of this. Anybody who would take fentanyl doesn't care whether they live or die. They don't care. They know. The addicts know. The people sitting at the bar day in and day out, they know that they're destroying themselves. But they don't care. They're self-destructive. To get through that, really difficult. But you have to be compassionate. You have to say, look, when you want to do it, you come in. But no cash. Ever. Because it goes right down. And, you know, the people who are begging in the streets and all that, you know, it's all junk. They're not spending it on food. They're not they're buying drugs with it. I never give them a dime. I'll fund the food pantries. I'll fund the Catholic charities all day long. But I'm not giving some guy on the street who's asking me for money anything. Because I know where the money's going. Right into the dealer's pocket. Anyway, uh, 66% of American adults have this situation. That's unbelievable. Thank you for watching the No Spin News. To watch the full episode anytime on BillOReilly.com, please sign up to become a premium or concierge member. Visit BillOReilly.com to sign up and start watching today.